Hello and welcome to the world of mathematics where we measure everything. Be it painting the walls or running a race or giving a cloth piece to the tailor, we need measurements everywhere. That is the topic of discussion today. Mensuration, which comes from Latin and means to measure. So, to measure anything, we need to understand how to measure it and what parameters are needed. We have already seen how to measure perimeter and area of a closed figure like a square or a circle. So let's recall a few basics. We know that perimeter is the length of the boundary of a closed figure. So perimeter of a square is 4 into its side. Similarly, the perimeter of a rectangle is twice length plus breadth. Now area is the space occupied by an object. So area of a square will be side into side or side square. Similarly, the area of a rectangle will be length into breadth. Now let us summarize the perimeters and areas of some common shapes that we know. The first is a square. We have already seen that its perimeter is four times length of side and its area is side square. Next in line is a rectangle. Its perimeter as we know is twice length plus breadth and its area is length into breadth. Our third shape is the humble circle. We know that it does not have any sides but its perimeter is called the circumference and that is given as 2 pi into r. Also we know that the area of the circle is pi into r square. Now, note that pi has a value of 3.14 or 22 by 7. The next shape is a parallelogram. Its perimeter is of course the sum of all the four sides while its area is nothing but base into height. And our final shape is the triangle. We know that its perimeter is the sum of all three sides and its area is half into base into height. So these were the basics of measuring perimeter and area of various shapes. Before moving on to solving some examples of measurements pertaining to these shapes, why don't we see something that will be useful to you? Yeah, I am sure you might be wondering what it is. It is something that many students fail to notice in a problem and end up losing their marks. You certainly do not want to be one among them, right? So. I am talking about the conversion of units. Let us do it then. We use various units like centimeter, meter, decimeter, etc. for measuring length, right? But there are problems where length is given in centimeters and we need to find area in meters. Oh boy, these tricks are never noticed. And they certainly hamper your final answer without you noticing it. So let us understand how to tackle this unit demon. Now, let us say that our length is in centimeters, okay? Let us take this square for example. It is given that its side is 100 centimeter long. Now, we need to find its area in the unit of meters and not centimeters. What do we do then? Well, don't be bothered by it at all. All we need to do is to convert our length in meters and then we can move ahead. So length of the side is given as 100 centimeters. Now can you tell me what the relation between meters and centimeters is? Absolutely. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Hence our side now becomes one meter. That was simple, wasn't it? Now we need to find the area. So what is the area of a square? It is indeed side square. So we get area as side into side. This is equal to 1 meter into 1 meter which is nothing but 1 meter square and there we have it. Now let us say that area is given as 1 meter square and we need to convert this area in terms of centimeters. So what do we do? We first write area as 1 meter into 1 meter. Now 1 meter is 100 centimeter. So area is 100 centimeter 
into 100 centimeter which is 10,000 centimeter square. So with the basics perfectly logged into our brains we can solve a few examples now. Ah, this chapter has a lot of examples so keep your paper and pen closer to you throughout. Our first example goes like this. There is a guy named Amit who owns a rectangular plot having dimensions of 30 and 20. Now he wants to construct a 15 meter by 15 meter house in the middle of the plot. Then in the remaining part of the plot he wants to develop a garden whose rate is 55 rupees per square meter. We need to find the cost that Amit will incur in developing the garden. That sounds terrifying. But no, we will see that it is actually very easy. Now analyze the scenario one by one. There is a plot. So it will have some area, right? Now he builds a house of some area and the remaining plot goes in the garden. Is the picture getting clear? So basically all we need to do is find the area of the garden and then multiply it by the cost and we will get our total cost and then we can breathe easy. Let's go on and solve it. First, we will need to find the area of the plot which is a rectangle. Now, the area of the rectangle is given by length into breadth. This is equal to 30 into 20, which is nothing but 600 square meters. Now, he builds a square house of side 15 meters. So, the area that the house occupies is given by side square. Substituting the value, we get area as 225 square meters. Now, Amit develops a garden in the remaining plot. So what is our next step? Exactly, subtract the areas. By doing so, we get the area of garden as area of plot minus area of house. We have found the values and so we get the area of the garden as 600 minus 225 that is 375 square meters. There. Now, we have the total area that the garden will occupy. So the one final step that remains is to find the cost. Now, rate of developing the garden is 55 rupees per square meter. Thus, the total cost of developing the garden is rate into area of the garden. So, we get 55 into 375 which is 20,625 rupees. Wasn't that simple as I had told you? With this, all our basics are clear and we can move ahead with learning measuring more shapes. That we will do in our next segment. See you there. Tutormate. For more amazing videos, download the free app on Apple App Store and Google Play Store.